Um, hello and welcome to uh, this uh, next video. I guess uh, what this video is, I'm going to use a uh, TI-89 to solve a 3 by 3 system of equations. So right now, uh, you know, this video fits in. I've been doing these nodal analysis videos where we actually derive this, uh, this uh, 3 by 3 system of equations. But you can just watch this if you're just wanting to figure out how to put in, you know, a 3 by 3 system, AX equal B, uh, into a TI-89. Uh, that's perfectly fine. You can watch this video kind of by itself if you want to figure out how to do that. So anyway, I've got my 3 by 3 system of equations. I've got my A matrix. I've got my unknown X vector. So again, what I'm looking for is my X vector. And then I've got, I've got my B matrix over here. So, sorry I didn't grab a pen before I push start on the video. So if I have AX equal B, and what I'm looking for is X, uh, then my X vector is going to be equal to A inverse times my B vector. And remember that uh, like if this is at all fam unfamiliar to you, you can watch. I've got a couple of different videos on... Uh, uh, on this in my nodal analysis section where I talk about all the linear algebra you really need if you're doing something like circuits. Um, so anyway, uh, I guess let's work on solving this particular system in the calculator. So anyway, here is my TI-89. As you can see, I've got a TI-89 titanium. And when you first turn on a TI-89, uh, this is what it looks like. This is called, I guess, the apps desktop. The first thing I'm actually going to do, I could start off uh, using this app's desktop right from the top. Uh, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. So actually if you want to figure out how you can turn off your app's desktop so that when you turn on your calculator you just get like your command line where you can put in, you know, 2 plus 2 and see an answer like that. What you can do is you can go to mode. So I'm going to click my mode button. Mode. And now I'm going to go to the third page of my mode. So I'm going to do that by pushing F3. So I push F3, and the last option, it says Apps Desktop. You might not be able to see that in this video, but it says Apps Desktop, the last option. Now I'm just going to turn that off. So I'm going to turn that off, and I push Enter twice. Uh, you have to push Enter twice, and it actually quits out mode for you. You have to, It has to save the mode. So anyway, now if I turn the calculator off, and I turn it back on, I just get the home screen. I no longer get that app's desktop. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I always like to do before I start on a problem like this is I want to clear out all of my variables because I'm going to put my A matrix and my B matrix into A and B variables. So I want to make sure that those variables are clear. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to push my second button and then I'm going to push uh, F1, which when I push second, that uh, it essentially gets me F6. So I do second F1, and then this is the menu that pops up, and I'm going to select the second option, which is my new problem option. So I select new problem, I hit enter, and now what it's done is it's cleared out all of the variables for me. So now, you know, if there had been something in my A variable, it's now gone. A is now an empty variable. I can use it however I want. So now let's go, uh, let's just jump straight into putting in this uh, A matrix into our calculator. So now uh, I've got my A matrix right here. And notice I didn't simplify it at all. I think I've mentioned this in a previous video. I want the calculator to do the maximum amount of work possible. So notice I didn't simplify minus 1 over 6, minus 1 over 12, minus 1 over 15. I didn't simplify that at all because, you know, like, granted, it's not that hard, but it's like, you know, if I try to simplify 50 of those on an exam, I might make a mistake. Whereas the calculator, if I'm really good at putting this in, the calculator is going to make, uh, isn't going to make a mistake, so long as I get that incorrectly. So anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to put in our A matrix. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to push our apps button right here. So I push apps. And now I'm going to select the sixth option. It says data slash matrix editor. I'm going to, I can either hit enter or I can push my, uh, what direction is that? My right arrow. So I'm going to push enter here. And now I can either open a current, uh, I can, I get current, op uh, the second option is open a, uh, an existing variable or I can create a new variable. 
All my variables have been cleared, so what I want to do is I want to uh, create a new variable. Also notice on all these menus, I've got these numbers, one, two, and three. I could just push like the three button on the calculator, and that would be an easy way to, like a shortcut of getting a new variable. So I'm going to, so I've selected new, I'm going to push enter. So this is my uh, data and matrix editor screen here, so I'm going to scroll. So right now I'm selecting the top option. It currently says data. I don't know if you can see that, but it says data. I'm going to push the right arrow, and now I'm going to select the second option, which is matrix, because I want to input a matrix into my variable. So I select matrix. I want it in my main folder because I'm currently in my main folder. You can actually set this up so you can put it separate places. You can put it in different places if you want to. Right now I'm just going to leave it set, uh, set to my main folder. And now for variable, uh, the alpha lock is, is actually on right now. You can name your variable. I just want to name this variable A. So now I've, uh, the variable name is A. I scroll down. There, there is a bug in the program here where technically I'm supposed to put in my row dimensions and column dimensions now. There's a bug in the program where the alpha lock is actually still on. So I'm actually going to push the alpha button so I turn off the alpha lock. And now I want to put in my A matrix. And A is a 3 by 3 matrix, so I'm going to put in 3 by 3. And now I'm just going to hit enter to say that all this data is okay and I'm ready to start putting in, putting in my, uh, my matrix. So I hit enter twice and now I've got my 3x3 three three matrix in the data editor so I can start putting in information. So I'm going to put in 1, hit enter. Now for 1, 6, I just put 1 divide by 6, hit enter. And now for 1 fourth, I just put 1 divide by 4, hit enter. And notice how every, each time I push enter, it just advances me on. So you can actually get really fast at putting stuff in. It's actually very helpful on an exam. So next, uh, uh, next position is right here. It's a 0. Position after that is actually a long expression. It's minus 1 over 6, minus 1 over 12, minus uh, 1 over 15 minus 1 over 15. So notice how I put that in. I didn't simplify anything. I just put it in lots of parentheses. It's very obvious. And when I push enter, the calculator simplifies that for me. So anyway, that goes in. The next one is 1 over 12, 1 over 12. And then uh, I'm on to the next row. So then I've got 0, I've got 1 over 12, and then I've got minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 12. Minus 1 over 4. So now I've got everything into my A matrix. Everything is in, the A matrix is saved, and now to get back to the command screen, I'm going to push the home button. So I push home, and notice I'm back at the home button, and I can print out my A matrix if I do alpha and A. A is under the equal sign right here, so I selected my variable A, and I can push enter, and it prints out my matrix like that. Uh, I can also, you know, do operations on A where I say, like, okay, I want to invert my matrix, so I'm going to take A, and to invert, I can raise it to the minus one power, so I use the caret button, and then raise to the minus one power, and then it'll work on it, and now I've got an inverse of A, uh, is what's being displayed right now. Um, so anyway, I can do, I can display my A matrix, I can do different things to it, I can even edit what the, what the entries are in the A matrix that can become helpful. So anyway, my A matrix is in the calculator. So the next thing I have to do is I have to get my B matrix into the calculator. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do just the exact same thing that we did with the A matrix. I'm going to uh, push the apps button going to go down to uh, entry to option number six, data matrix editor. I'm going to get a new variable, push enter. I want it to be a matrix, not just data, so I get matrix. It goes into the main folder, so I don't change that. And now for the variable name, this is going to be variable B. So I say variable B, scroll down, and remember the alpha lock is still on here. That's something that can be really frustrating. So I have to hit alpha if I want to put in numbers here. And B is a three by one matrix here. So my row dimension is three, and my column dimension stays one. So I can just push enter, and because that's okay, I can push enter again. 
And now I've got my editor where I can just put in these values. So now for the first entry, I've got 3.3 over 6 plus 3.3 over 4. Notice I'm not simplifying anything. And then the next one, I've got minus 3.3 over 6. And then the very last entry, I've got minus 3.3 over 4 minus 1. And that's it. I've put in AX equals B into my calculator. So now I want to get back to the home screen, so I push the home button. And just like I did with A, I can print out B if I want to, make sure that I've put it in right. Um, it's a little bit difficult to check to see if you've put B in right because you didn't do any simplification here. But you can still, you know, you can print it out. And if you, you know, wanted to, you could do, uh, you know, put it in again, put it in twice, something like that. That's uh, always a good idea if you're on an exam to make sure that you've actually put it into the calculator correctly. And then if I want the solution, remember what I have to compute is this, x equals a inverse times b. And remember, I have to multiply it exactly in this order, right? I can't do b times a inverse. I have to multiply a inverse times b. So now, all I want to do is uh, open parentheses, alpha a, raised to the minus 1 power, close parentheses, times alpha b, and that's it. I get my values for x. So uh, my I1 in this particular problem, so x is I1, V0, and V3. So I1 is minus 0.77 amps. V0 is 3.4 volts, and V3 is 6.3 volts. So anyway, uh, you know, hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully, you know, you just saw how to put a 3x3 three three system of equations into, or a 3x3 three three system uh, into a TI-89 and, and how to solve it. So anyway, hopefully you found that helpful, uh, and I guess I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching.